Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video today we're going to talk about the renal structure and function. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe. And then go over and do me a favor, check out ninjanerd.org. That's where we put up for all of our lectures here on YouTube, notes and illustrations that follow along with the lectures so that you can study from and really bang down all those concepts that you need to know. So let's get started now with renal structure and function. So you're probably learning now what the renal, func or renal structure and function is for your class and you're just like, there's a lot of things going on. So for me, what I like to break down the renal anatomy and structure for is what is it used for? So we basically have blood and then we have urine. And when you kind of separate those two in your mind, you get a better outcome, I think, of understanding the renal system. So let's go over first and let's talk about just the major points here and the major um, structures that are within our renal system. So up here, I have drawn basically our right side on this and our left side here. And we're gonna just go through real quickly and identify. We're looking at our abdominal cavity, right? We're talking about mainly the kidneys in the renal system, but there are some other functions and structures as well. So let's go through really quickly here. We have our kidneys, right? We have a pair of kidneys. They're kidney bean shaped, right? They sit somewhere around our T11 to our L3, right? Our thoracic to our lumbar. And they have our ribs 11 and 12 that are our floating ribs that help protect them just a little bit. And our kidneys also sit retroperitoneal, meaning they're gonna sit behind our per peritoneal cavity towards our back, closer to our uh, spinal cord. And they're also going to have, what you notice here, our right one is sitting lower than our left. So this is an anterior view of somebody you're looking at here. You see the right kidney here and then the left. And you're gonna notice that the right is down and a little bit lower, and that has to do with what? What organ is sitting up here that is gonna be pressing down a little bit? That's our liver, right? Not part of the renal system, but a, something just to understand and you know to really nail down the anatomy of our renal system. So we have our kidneys, right? It's the biggest thing that we can talk about. And then as our kidneys drain urine, what are these structures right here? These are our ureters, right? So we have ureters here on both sides, so a ureter and a ureter. We'll do one on each side so that we have continuity here. And then as urine drains, it goes into what? This big structure here, which is our bladder. And then we have the drain from our bladder to the outside world, which is our urethra. Okay, so far so good. We got kidneys, both kidneys drain into ureters that go into the bladder and then out the urethra. Fantastic. We also wanna talk about some of the blood flow to the kidney. So here we have our abdominal aorta. So our abdominal descending. aorta here and over here if blood is going down our aorta going through the rest of the body and then eventually has to come back up to the heart what is the main vessel that leads back to our heart that's our inferior vena cava or our IVC so we see the um, descending abdominal aorta coming down and it's breaking off into the kidneys so right here and right here we have our renal artery Right? and this would be our right renal artery, and this is our left renal artery. And then our blood breaks down into smaller and smaller and smaller components. Eventually we get drop off of oxygen and nutrients, and then we have blood that's coming out of the kidney, and then that would be our renal vein. Right? So we have our left renal vein, and then our right renal vein. So I hope that makes some sense there for you. Now let's quick talk about the function of our renal system. What are the main overall, overall functions of our system, right? Because I think when we understand just the, the basic function, it's gonna help us understand what are these minute structures and what are their jobs and their function as well. So the main one that we can start off with is just eliminating waste which can also be the filtration, right? So we're trying to get rid of waste, things that we aren't using anymore. 
medications that are getting filtered out of the blood, any type of electrolytes that we're trying to balance. So with that eliminating of waste and keeping that balance, we can also think of the word homeostasis, right? And homeostasis can do with blood volume, right? Which we know is also having to do with blood pressure. It can also do with the pH of the blood. We can also talk about different types of hormones, right? So our renal system is able to help us produce a lot of different hormones that can also help with different types of functions. So we'll talk about renin in our upcoming videos. We'll also talk about erythropoietin, which is our creation of red blood cells. And all of those have to do with us being able to keep a homeostasis as well within our body. What else can we talk about? We can also talk about the synthesis of vitamin D to the active form, right, which is really good for us. So when we're talking about all these functions, we're talking about eliminating waste, we're talking about filtration, homeostasis, the blood volume, blood pH, and when we say blood volume, I said this could also then eventually go into blood pressure, which also has to do with our hormones and the synthesis of vitamin D. When we are talking about all this, we want to start thinking about what components, as we go through and look at these structures, are working for us to do this function. Because when we can break it down into these functions, that we can understand the purpose or the um, importance of these different structures. So let's go on now and talk about the kidney. We're going to look at a cross-section of the kidney and identify all of those structures in there as well. Now let's look at here this cross-section that I drew of the kidney. And we're going to go through and identify some of the structures that are in a cross section. So when we're looking at the kidney, we've chopped it in half now, we're looking at it from the side, and we can start to break down some of the structures. So the first is going to be this outer region here. If you're looking at diagrams of the kidney or an actual kidney, it's going to be a little usually lighter in color. And this is our renal cortex. Okay. So that is our outer most area here. And then our inner area here, which is all this brown that we're going to talk about and all these layers with inside is our renal medulla. Right, so these are more areas um, that you can understand, not just any, any particular structure. But then we're looking at this renal medulla. Within it are these brown things right here. These are our renal pyramids, right? They are a pyramid shape. And within those renal pyramids, between them, we have these blue areas. These are our renal columns. Okay. And then we have right here the area where the renal col or the renal pyramid is ending, right? So those are known as the renal papillae, or also in the papilla for the one. So all of them together would be papillae, individually is renal papilla. Now, we're talking about this area here that's touching this pink structure, so what's this big pink structure in here? When we're looking at that, we see these kind of like little finger-like projections that are going out and touching all these, right? So these are called our minor calyx. So our minor calyx. And these minor calyx is eventually where urine starts to collect and they drain into these bigger areas that are called our major calyx. That's easy, right? And then they eventually drain into the area right here, which is our renal pelvis. Right. So now that urine is eventually wanting to leave our kidney, right? And we have an opening here that you can kind of draw in. And this is the opening that's going to allow our blood flow to come in and exit the kidney. It's also going to allow our urine to exit the kidney. And there's also some nerves that go in and out of this. So this opening is what we can call the renal, whoops. Renal, there we go, hilus or hilum. Really depends on what your professors are asking you to call it, but the renal hilus. And this is going to allow our renal pelvis, as it exits the kidney, become our ureter. Right. So now we have our ureter, and we have eventually urine coming out of the kidney. So now we've identified all these structures, but I also want to talk about blood flow through the kidney, because that also is really important. And while we do the blood flow through the kidney, just understand that we are eventually going to move into talk about even more minute structures down here. But let's start with the biggest structure going into the kidney, which is going to be this big red one here, and that is our renal artery, right? 
So it's bringing blood from the abdominal aorta, descending aorta, into our renal artery. Our renal artery then is coming in here, and you can see as it's starting to branch, right? So these branching arteries right here are our segmental artery. Then our segmental artery is going to go up here, and you're going to see it go between the two pyramids here. Now, it helps understand what a lobe is, right? So we're going to eventually come down and talk about the lobe a little more in detail. But if you can just picture here, you have a pyramid. When you have a renal pyramid, I'll do it with the, uh, let's do it down here because this one's not drawn that much. You have a renal pyramid, and you have its cortex above it. So if you would draw, oh, Mark, I didn't want to work there. Draw kind of a little area here. This would be a lobe, right? And that's what I've drawn down here, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But to understand what the name of this artery is, if you understand that this is a lobe here and this is a lobe here, this artery right here is the interlobar artery. Right, so we have the interlobar artery. As it travels up, now it is going to start to turn. You see it, it's breaking off, it's turning here over this lobe, into this lobe, and here over onto this lobe or over this pyramid. We have this one right here, and this one is our arc, like it's arcing, right? Arc cuet artery. And then from there, we'll eventually talk about that down here, but it, as it goes in through our cuet, it's going to go up through our cortical radiate artery and then to our afferent arterial. So let's go down now and talk about what a lobe is, right? And talk about how all of this, these structures work as well. So we'd mentioned it before, let's say it again. What is a lobe? What is the definition or the portions of a lobe? When you talked about it, it's gonna be what? What are these brown things here? Those are the renal pyramids. Pyramids, right? Plus it's surrounding. What is the name of the areas out here? We talked about it, the renal cortex, so it's surrounding cortical tissue. Okay, following along so far. So we have the lobe, right? We have a renal pyramid that would basically end right about here, and then we're up here in the cortex. So let's identify really quickly. If we drew an imaginary, we'll just stay with the purple, imaginary line kind of like right here, going all the way across, we would have here our cortex, or our medulla, sorry. Drew that again, our medulla. And then up here is our cortex, right? Now, we just talked about that blood flow, right? It's coming down from our abdominal aorta, right? As it goes into the kidney, it's gonna go into our renal artery. Our renal artery is gonna segment, break apart. As it breaks apart, it goes between the lobes. So what was the name of this structure right here? The artery between the lobes, the inter low bar artery, right? So we have interlobar artery. It's gonna come break off, right? As it starts to separate, it's going to start turning, right? As it's turning, we're having this little bit of an arc. That's our arcuate artery. Blood's gonna continue to flow. It's gonna get here, right? And you're gonna see there's a structure that's going up. And it's going up, and I like to picture it as these like little like rays or spikes. I kind of drew it up here. You can see it. They're going towards the outside of the, the um, cortex. These are our cortico. This is going towards the cortex. Cortical radiate. They're radiating out. Cortical radiate arteries. See that? So as they start to radiate out, we have all of these little structures. Now, now we're getting small. These little structures. What is the word for a really small artery? Do you remember? It's the word arterial. These really small arteries here are our afferent arterial. Okay. So now we have our afferent arterial, and we can see that over here as well. If we follow this arcuate artery all the way across, we can go from our arcuate artery here, we're going up 
into our cortical radiate artery. Our cortical radiate artery is breaking off and it has all of these different afferent arteries here. These afferent arteries then are what are going to go into this structure, which is I have blown up for our next diagram in a minute. But as this blood flows into this next structure, this purple one here, and the name of that purple structure is our glomerulus. And in there we have our glomerular capillaries. Now, we're going to continue to talk about the blood flow in the next diagram or when we talk about our next structure, the nephron. But I want to quick talk here about, we talked about blood flow a little bit and we're going to finish it up in the next picture. But I didn't want this to get too jumbled because it gets even more in depth in a second. But what we have here now, this brown structure. So now we have blood that essentially is being filtered out, right? Because we know our kidneys is our filtration system. So it's happening in the glomerulus, right? We have some exchange occurring. And now we have something occurring called filtrate. So filtrate is what eventually becomes urine. So this byproduct here of filtrate is gonna go into our nephron here, this big brown structure. All right, so we have our nephron, and I'll talk about the separate parts of it later, or like in like a minute. But the nephron then is able to take that filtrate it goes through all of these little portions of the nephron and it dumps into this big structure here coming down the center of our pyramid. This is our collecting duct. As the collecting duct um, brings this filtrate all the way down to the bottom, when it does exit, this is where we have urine. So until it exits here, it is not called urine, it's called filtrate. So as filtrate starts to collect here in the collecting duct, right, and it starts flowing down, it gets to this opening, right? And this opening, as the filtrate exits and becomes urine, is our papillary duct. Which makes sense, right, because we said, when we talked about the pyramids before, we have these renal papillae, right, which is the bottom portion here, and then oop, the renal papillae, And then, as it comes out of the opening, which is the papillary duct, we get urine. Hope that makes sense. So now let's go over and talk about the nephron and how intricate all these little structures are um, within our nephron, okay? All right, engineers. nerds, now let's look here. Go back over a little bit of some of the blood flow and then talk about even more structures here. So we remember we were talking about those interlobular arteries, right? They go in and they start to arc, right? So we have our acute artery and then our cortical radiate, and then now we're going into what we were talking about before. So right here is our afferent arterial. Blood then flows into this purple structure here, which was our glomerulus. So it's going through its glomerular capillaries. Then it exits this renal corpuscle with its Bowman's capsule and glomerulus into the efferent arterial. And we start to continue to get exchange here and that's where we go into our peritubular capillaries. Now these peritubular capillaries, you're gonna notice, are pictured like this all the way around our nephron. Uh, when they go below, so peritubular capillaries can be their own little capillary bed or they can be also around the nephron like this. But when they are down into, what is this portion of the kidney, right? If we have our arcuate veins and artery here, they're changing our medulla in our cortex. So these peritubular capillaries, when they go around and they're going down into the medulla, that's where we can call this our vasa recta. Right. So we have our vasa recta. It's going around different parts of the nephron, dropping off all of its different nutrients. You can see it's still winding around and eventually comes over here, right? So then we have blood flow coming off of the nephron going down back into our arcuate vein. So, oh wait, and I forgot to say this is our cortical radiate. 
because we didn't save the cortical radiate vein yet. So let's run through it one more time. We have our arcuate artery and our cortical radiate artery, afferent arterial, into our glomerular capillaries. Blood is then going to still come out into the efferent arterial, down through the peritubular capillaries that are then going around into our medulla, which we call our vasorecta, coming on up, and then going into our cortical radiate vein, and then our arcuate vein. Okay, So we have blood flow through there, but now let's also talk about how these different structures of the nephron are named as well. So we talked a little bit about it. We're looking here. We said that this purple structure here is our glomerulus. Right? And there is an area around it that is brown. That area that is around it that is brown is called our Bowman's capsule. So we have our glomerulus and then our Bowman's capsule that is surrounding it. Together, those two structures together are called our renal corpuscle. And that renal corpuscle we'll talk about in a minute. So now when we're talking about the nephron, we just want to identify some structures here. We have this portion of the tube, right? This is a long tube, right? It's a big opening. This is how we're going to get eventually our urine. This is where all of that filtrate is going to be draining through. So right here we have our proximal convoluted tubule, right? As that filtrate starts to descend here, it goes down through the loop of Henle. So we have the descending limb of the loop of Henle, right? And then the ascending limb. But this whole portion is called the loop of Henle. So we have loop of Henle. And then as it starts to ascend, right, we go up in here and we're looking at this purple structure. And this is our distal convoluted tubule, which we'll talk about a little more in depth in a minute. And then our filtrate continues through into what we've identified before as our collecting duct. Eventually it exits out our papillary duct, and then eventually we have urine. So now let's sit down and talk about the renal corpuscle. All right, ninja nerds, we're on to the last part here, and we're going to talk about the renal corpuscle. So this image here that I drew up is very similar to that one up there. Um, and I want you to take note of how things are drawn, especially in books, because this, I think, helps everything make more sense. So let's quickly identify these structures again. When we have blood flow into our renal corpuscle, right, our renal corpuscle is made of what two things? Our Bowman's capsule, which is the brown structure here, right, and then our glomerulus which is the purple structure. So I always picture it as this guy right here. This is RC, the renal corpuscle. That's him, RC. He's his glomerulus, and he's wearing his Bowman's cap. So when we're looking at our renal corpuscle here, what's the blood flow that is going into it? It's coming from where? This is our afferent. I almost spelled it wrong. There we go. Afferent arterial. And then it's eventually coming out our efferent arterial. Okay. And then we have our glomerulus, right? Our glomerular capillaries. And we have our uh, Bowman's capsule here. When we're talking about how all the filtration portion works, right? When we leave our glomerulus and we have filtrate that has started to be made, we have our proximal convoluted tubule, right? And eventually it goes by, and if you go back and look at the nephron that I drew before, you're going to see that eventually the distal convoluted tubule comes really close to these afferent and efferent arterioles. And that has to do with a lot of these cells in here, and these cells in here have lots of functions that partake into like the entire renal system. Because uh, when we are talking about nephrons and we're talking about renal corpuscles, we essentially have almost a million nephrons per kidney. So two million uh, nephrons within the human body essentially. And these little components are what are basically helping us regulate our blood pressure, helping us filtrate out um, all of our electrolytes and our fluids. And when we look down into this little area right here, that's where a lot of it can take place. And I think it's really cool. So right here in the distal convoluted tubule, these cells that line here, we have our macula densa cells. Okay, so we have our macula densa cells there, and then on the afferent 
arterial, let's use the color, what color is going to be easy to see? Blue. Right here, all these cells that are aligning, draw them in a different color so it makes more sense. Right here. These are what we call our juxta glomerular cells. And then we have these little cells in the middle, which I'll use pink for. These right here are our mesangial cells. You're probably thinking, like, why are you pointing out all of these cells? Well, it's really important just to understand that the macula densa cells, they are chemoreceptors. And what they're going to be able to do is they're going to be able to sense what's going on like pH-wise, salt-wise, things like that, and be able to tell the nephron what we should be reabsorbing, what we should not be reabsorbing based upon what's going on. Because if you think about it, this is the distal convoluted tubule. We've already had filtration occur. And now we're kind of like quality controlling. We're checking that filtrate before it exits the body and seeing what we're getting rid of, what the concentration is, what's going on. So these cells, macular densa cells, are able to tell the rest of the body, hey, we should be holding on to this or we shouldn't. And how that happens is there are little signals that go through these menangeal cells and also go to our glomerular cells. With the juxtaglomerular cells, those are also baroreceptors. What they're able to do is they're able to sense pressure within the capsules as well as within that arterial, and they're able to tell us, are we, gonna, are we having enough blood volume, or is our blood pressure good, is our blood pressure not so good? That's also going to send signals for us to be able to decide what our body needs to do to auto-regulate that blood pressure. So together, this whole thing right here is in what we're going to call our juxtaglomerular apparatus. And this is a, a big portion of the function of how our renal system is able to control and keep our blood pressure um, regulated along with other functions. So that's why I think it's really cool to know what cells are where and how the renal corpuscle is anatomically drawn out within the body and how it lays in the body because it serves a purpose, it serves a function. So I hope that made sense. Um, but that's it, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we talked about the renal system. We talked a little bit about the function and the anatomy of it. I hope it made sense. Uh, this is the beginning of a big renal series. So Keep an eye out for all of the videos following after this. And as always, until next time.